the generations returning to the lands, called by a deep longing sowed by old stories that took root. They saved the seeds of something that could sustain us all. Our children still remember the city. They translate like immigrants' children, their fluency so agile that you might even mistake them for country folk after just a few years' immersion. The elders here know better, but welcome their enthusiasm kindly and gladly teach what was for a time rejected. Seems like when they sense a devotion to reviving a life bonded to place, the sharing economy of a community appears. It is staggeringly generous and abundant. The next generation that is born in relationship to soil, they may well be unrecognizably integrated, save for a certain accent. And if we have shared stories and skills with the slow, deep, and generous urgency that the times call for, we may yet mend ties to the past before they unravel irrevocably. Can the city exist only as long as it can extract from the country? Is a model of reciprocity even possible? Maybe, maybe, but like the mothering that births and raises people, or citizens, workers, consumers. The countryside and its country folk are rendered invisible by an economy that blinds us to the value of anything that is not a market itself, but only a resource supporting one. It must, as the exploitation of cheapened resources and labor for increasing profit is its gain. So my mothering body is like the countryside and when we reunite, we pull each other close in mutual recognition. Yes, we are essential. In another economy, another story, one that we will tell as we live it, what is essential is valued as such. The microbial soil and air and water, the plants, the insects, the animals we are and live amongst, all of life living. What are the skills to support life? This is the question we must answer before the economy, that story of our material life can alter into a life supporting one. For now, how we live is overlaid on the strange disembodied, disconnected actions of a life premised on scarcity that must compete, that must beat out the other for a piece of it working hard or buying one's way, inventing needs to sell to, discovering new markets. We all know, uncomfortably now, the appropriation that the discoverer enacts. So this economy makes us uneasy, for as we succeed, we find we've become the colonizer. Even the revolutionary proves a worse king than the last. If we thrive in this model, it is at the expense of so many and so much. The premise of infinite profit rots from the inside because by winning, someone always loses. As we are all interconnected in life, so we are never immune to what befalls any one of us. Like toxins sprayed on a single crop in the landscape, poisons to kill a single pest. The nature of infinite exchange is that any toxin eventually poisons us all. The world is vast, but the machine is so big now, there is nowhere left to extract, to overpower, to beat. Our greatest economic success is ultimately our greatest failure, though some feel it first and more acutely. What an economy. It takes from life until it dies. Do we know life intimately enough as we dissociate from the violence of this story, even to recognize the throes? But you are feeling it as I am. In feeling deeply, as painful as that is, we reconnect. In answering that question for ourselves, what is life supporting? Then, increasingly in community, across experience and difference, 
we answer with another story. It sounds a little like a very old one our great-great-grandparents might have told their children. We recognize it, like a garment long stored away somewhere in the far reaches. We can patch it together, alter it to fit our new shape. In collaboration now, in community, on the land, in relationship to the living being we are living within, we can replace a pattern of domination with a pattern of reciprocity, of meeting the needs of all. What will we stitch together now to create the strong bonds from past to future? What skills will we become fluent in? What old heritage seeds will we sow? It is in our hands now, in slow, deep, and generous urgency, we begin. This small work is supported by the Apple Turnover members. Thank you so much. Come and meet me live to talk more about these kinds of ideas and practices Join me on the second Saturday Q&A and farm tour. Find out more at patreon.com slash appleturnover. Thanks for your support. Thanks for listening.